Hello and welcome to your next lesson on how to use Creo to create some, uh, this time some detailed drawings of the coupling link. You can see in front of me here is the finished product of uh, our drawings. We have one, two, three parts all on the one page, suitably dimensioned, and also we're copying basically what the textbook uh, suggested here. We're actually doing a section line through our coupling link to give us a sectional front view. This reveals some interior detail here. And also on the retaining clip, um, they've also sectioned through, which is only cutting through this part of the retaining clip here. We can see that cross hatched here as well. I would uh, argue that that's a bit of overkill. But anyway, so I'm uh, basically going to be taking this in three steps. One, showing how to bring all the parts in. Uh, two, how to do uh, basic dimensioning and then sectioning, tidying up and publishing the PDF. Fair few steps in this drawing. Okay, so back to Creo. The usual thing, uh, make sure that you uh, set your working directory to the correct directory. If uh, You can also do it by going manage session and select working directory. There's my coupling link being my working directory and OK to that. OK, to create a drawing, um, it pays to uh, have at least one part of the drawing that you're going to, as a part, open. But we're just going to go straight in with a new drawing. File New and choose Drawing from the drop-down box and name your drawing um, what it is. Detail underscore uh, coupling underscore link and I'll just call this number one. Okay to that. And here you've got to go searching for the correct format. So uh, when you click on empty or format and then this bottom box here browse, you should have uh, two options, an assembly format or a detailed drawing format. The only difference is um, that there's no parts list in the detailed drawing, but when you put an assembly drawing in, it populates a parts list. So we'll leave this as a detailed drawing, so select the detailed drawing format, double click, click OK again, and then you're prompted to enter some information. Uh, this information will then automatically appear in the title block and is required by Australian standards. So it's modelled by yourself. Enter. This is the first drawing that I'm going to do in this set of drawings. That's drawing number one. Enter. Class is 11 graphics. And the material, uh, there are various materials. Some and literally write various. Okay, and if you look down here, you'll see that it's actually populated some of the title block with some of that information, date, class, and so on. We'll go back into this later on and uh, clean that up a little bit. Okay, so you'll notice from now we're in the drawing mode. There's a number of tabs across the top here. The main ones that we use are going to be layout and annotate uh, for the purposes of detailed drawings. When you're in the layout tab, it's anything to do with controlling views. When you're in the annotate tab, it's everything to do with dimensioning and so on. So the first thing we need to do is to select the drawing model that we wish to make active to create a view from. So go to drawing model, come up here to add model, and then you simply find the part you want to bring in first. So coupling part will do for me, double click, and then I want to set the model. And oh, I've actually got two open, I'm going to choose the coupling here and hit done. Come over to my screen, right click and hold it down for a second, insert general view, OK, and then left click again. Or you could have clicked on the general tab up here. And you'll see it defaults to an isometric view. Uh, we want to use the uh, different model view name box here to um, keep on double clicking and zooming in and out until you get the correct orientation for the view. So this says it's a front view, but we're going to use this as a top view. So uh, I'm going to apply and close and move that up to its position of a top view. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to then right click and hold down and I'm going to project a front view from that top view. 
So remember the front view is always directly below the top view, can be nowhere else because of our dihedral board. And we've done the basics of getting the two views in of the coupling. No sense in putting a side view in because it doesn't give us any extra information. Now we need to bring in perhaps the retaining clip. So once again, drawing model tab, add model, go find the retaining clip, double click, and then set the model. Setting the model is basically saying I want the retaining clip to be the model that I'm creating the view from. Click on retaining clip, click on done return, and same thing. This time I'm going to hit the general tab up here, just a different way of doing it. OK. Left click again. And once again, um, experiment with the different view positions here until we get the one you want. OK, so that could be my front view and I could project the top view from that. It's important here to check that your scales are the same. A scale of 1 is to 1 for this view, and I'm assuming this is also a scale of 1 is to 1. Click Apply and Close. Bring this down the page a little bit and right click, Insert Projection View. And then we do a similar thing then, of course, for the pin. Drawing model, add model, go find a pin, set model, pin, done return, general, OK, left click, move the box out of the road. And this time, um, when basically, if you look back at the um, final drawing, we went kind of like a side view or front view and then a side view. So to do that, we might need to do a little bit of mucking around. Let's have a look. There's the view there. Back. Now that's no good to me. Front. Now, which view is that? Front, I can see. I think this is from the left-hand side. So I'm going to hit Apply and Close. Move the drawing over slightly. Right-click. Project from that view. OK, it's back to front there. So that was... I need to reverse it. So that was a bottom view. So I might change that to a uh, top view instead. And you can then see, it's, because that's a top view now, this has repositioned itself in the correct orientation. Click Close. OK, so that's the, really the first step to bringing those views in. Uh, then we start adding dimensions, um, center lines, uh, sectioning, and so on. So we might do some basic dimensioning, then we'll stop and then we'll uh, start a new lesson on sectioning and so on. We might start with the easier uh, one to dimension, it's going to be the dimensioning of the coupling link up here. If we go back to our solution, we can see that we've got a dimension to the two centres of these two holes. We, of course, we need the diameter for these two 32 holes, the diameter of the 60, a uh, broken diameter here or a broken radius of 75 to signify that the center is actually somewhere out in space. Six millimeters and that's about all the dimension we need. We need some center lines as well. So back to Creo and you need to be into the annotate tab if you're going to do any dimensioning. Now there's two ways you can go about dimensioning. One, you can kind of pick up the dimensions that you used when you modeled this and you do that by selecting a view, coming up to this kind of torchy looking thing here and click onto it. What happens then is that um, because the dimension tab is now highlighted over here in show model annotations, you can see that the dimensions from the actual model are coming in. As I hover over them, you can see that um, they become highlighted. And if you wish to keep that dimension, you simply click onto it it goes black and you can see it's checked over here. So I'm going to keep the 32. Uh, the 60 though I'm going to do down this end so I'll just leave that and I'm going to select the 100. That's all I want. I just want the 100 and the 32 from there. And now if I move uh, my way down to the far right here of these tabs this one is for center lines as well. So while I'm there I'm also going to select some center lines that I wish to keep. So I'm going to select this center line of this um, hole at the right side here and then of the one on the left side as well. And I'm going to hit Apply and then Cancel. And you can see here we've got some dimensions uh, on our drawing already. Now you can manipulate dimensions um, lots, uh, but the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this uh, 100 dimension by selecting it and then pulling it down through my drawing to 
through the um, top view down through the front view which is going to signify the length of that dimension. There's a little issue here, if I just deselect that dimension you'll see that the leader line goes right through the drawing which causes confusion. So I need to make a break between this leader line and uh, the axis line and so on. So I'm going to select that leader line, move towards the end of it and you see that you get a black square. Click and drag that black square down until it's just on outside the drawing like so. Same down the other end, black square, bring it outside the drawing. And then we're going to select this center line here and we're going to extend the center line so it's just past the exterior of the drawing here. One, same one here, two, and while we're at it we might as well do the vertical ones. I'm not going to bother these horizontal ones here because we're actually going to have a um, uh, a cutting plane coming through here later on. So there's the first one, 100 millimeters to simplify that it was 100 millimeters from center to center. This 32 here, um, if I select it, I can move it around. Uh, if I hold my right mouse down on it, I can also change some things about the arrow styles and so on. I'm just going to hit flip arrow and you can see here that it's changed it to a different style of arrow. It's still pointing to the center and if I bring it say this side of the drawing there's an issue in that we have the dog leg going the wrong direction so I'm just going to right click on that and uh, this time I'm going to go flip text and you can see it's moving it to the other side of the leader line. So I'll leave that 32 there. Um, let's now put in the 60 uh, for this uh, larger circle. So rather than using the model annotation, we can use these functions here. So dimension, and you see it says on entity. On entity basically means on that line. So I click on that line once, I click on that line twice, and then I place my mouse over here somewhere in space and send a mouse click to finish. And you can see here now we've got our diameter dimension of 60. I don't like this style of arrow because it's continuing through so I'll hit return to get out of the mode of inserting a dimension and now I can edit this dimension so once again right click and flip arrow and then select and then if I move that around this normally disappears normally. If not we're going to have to be a little bit clever. Oh there it goes it's disappeared. Okay let's go back to our drawing let's see what else we've got uh, to put on. So 60, 32, ah, this one of 75. In actual fact, that one there is wrong. Here's the text box I'm after. 30, 60, 75. Okay, so this dimension line here signifies with this uh, dog leg break in it that the center for this radius of 75 is somewhere out in space. So if we go back to Creo, and um, these are all your standard dimensioning tools. You see here annotations, if there's an arrow beside it, if we click on that, make our way down to our Z radius dimension. Choose, and it says down the bottom here, to select an arc, like so, and then select the position where you want the end of the Z radius dimension to start. And you can see it goes in there like so. I'd probably would suggest this is a little bit crowded here, so I'm just going to uh, select this dimension here. Oh, I'm still in insert, so I'm just going to send a mouse button to get out of that. And I'm probably going to push him back over there where it was before. And where was it again? Flip text. And the 75, I think I might move this whole layout down just a fraction. It's a bit too crowded for my liking. And then I might even reinsert that dimension because it looks a bit too small to me. So once again, annotation, Z radius dimension, click on the arc and then select the center point. Mm, no, I still don't like that. Center mouse button to get out of that. I'll try one more time. Annotate, Z. Come into this side for like a further side of it and then come over here. Oh, and that's too big. Basically, the first point and the last point, you can see there's the big Z. So I was too close for the first two and, and too far away for this last one. Send a mouse button. Sorry, guys. Annotate Z radius. Let's go there. And then let's go there. Okay, that's satisfactory. 
Okay, so only last thing to do now is to give some thickness to this front view. So use my dimension tool, select one line. I don't need to push control, I can select the other line and push your cursor out to where you want the dimension to go and center mouse click. Six millimeters there, which is fine. So we use that technique to do the, um, the basic dimensions around the drawing. Um, there's no more to do on the coupling. There's a couple of um, basic ones of diameter in here on the retaining clip and here and so on, pretty much the same. What I will do is show you how to do this uh, 16 or 32 millimeter dimension and perhaps this radius of 10. And there's a couple of little tricky ones over here as well. So I'm going to assume you can do these. I'm just going to focus on this radius of 10 and the 16. So we'll come back to our um, drawing hit return and first of all we might do some uh, this radius of 10 first so I'm just going to get dimension click once this time and if I only click on once and then send a mouse button you'll notice it doesn't give us a diameter dimension it gives us an actual radius let's get out of that insertion method type and if we go to our final you can see here that we actually want that sort of uh, above extended elbow um, design rather than a simple leader line. So while that's highlighted, if I right click and go properties, it'll then pop up with a whole lot of data. If you go to display, text orientation, the default setting is this one. If you change it from that to above extended elbow, you get, in my opinion, uh, a much uh, more satisfactory way of showing that radius of 10. Okay. So we'll leave that there like so. The uh, next dimension to place in is going to be this um, 32 millimeter dimension here. And we know from when we modeled the drawing that the 32 dimension came from where this axis line intersected with this uh, straight line here. So it's a little bit tricky sometimes to get exactly to that point we want to dimension. So I'll just show you how not to then how to dimension this correctly. So back to Creo, use my dimension tool as I normally do, saying on entity. And if I um, just click on this surface here, one and two, you'll see that the lines have gone red. If I come over here with my cursor and center mouse click, it gives me an angle dimension, which is not what I'm after. I'm just going to stay in dimension, but this time I'm going to move my cursor right up to the left hand side, almost to the end of that line. And you can see at that point where it's picking up the other line from that uh, sketch. If I place, place it just on the end there, left click, you'll notice you get a white point appearing on the end of the line. So it's actually dimensioning to the end of this line to this white point. If I come down here, I do the same thing, move it right up to the very end of the line, click once, you can see the white point as well. If you basically, if you move your cursor right to the end, it will allow you to select the end of the line rather than the length of the line. Come over here, center mouse button, and it's asking you where do you want the dimensions? Do you want a horizontal dimension, a vertical one? Well, in this case, it's going to be a vertical dimension. Click on vertical, and it's placed it in there for us. Return, and then just we obviously get rid of the angle dimension there. You will probably move that in a bit closer to I'd say. Okay let's have a look at uh, what else we've got there. We've got a radius of 10, 32, the 25, you can do those ones there. Some center lines of course so we go back to our uh, Creo, select the view, go to the torch and go over the center lines that you wish to include. Probably one, two, this one here wouldn't hurt, three and four. Okay, to that name, while we're there, let's look at um, dimensions. We might have a few there that we can probably just select already. Let's go to 25. Uh, we don't need the 100 because we know these two are going to be the same distance apart. The 40, is there 25 down here somewhere? Doesn't look like there is. Apply that and cancel. And then, yeah, you can get in here and tidy these up much the way that we did with the um, the last one. Okay, um, same sort of deal here of course with this front view. Um, sorry, went to show metal annotations. We just want the six. 
some center lines, just the centers of the two holes, two large holes. Don't put the centers into these radius um, unless it's a full hole on the front view. And which I think I just did, did I? Oh no, there we go. And you can see here's an issue here with the six that's going right to the very end, so we'll pull that. So I might make this six millimeter dimension appear on this end, much like the one above it has as well. I might pull that in a bit actually. Click on the dimension line. No, it's been nasty to me. No, I'll come back to it later. Okay, so uh, clean that up, 25 millimeter dimension there. That's probably the hard dimensions in this one to do. And if we come over to the uh, last drawing or last view, there's a few things which might be new to us. Let's have a look. So we've got linear dimension, that's easy, you can do those. Uh, linear dimensions here. Um, these dimensions here are interesting in that uh, rather than using our diametric dimension with the arrowhead passing or the arrow line passing through the center here, the general convention is that if it's a side view and you want a dimension diameter, um, this is a better convention to use, the diameter of 32 um, showing it across there. Um, actual fact, just looking at that, I've just realized that it doesn't have a diameter in there. Mm, it's going to cause me some issues. Anyway, so you can do the linear ones, one, two, three, four. Um, this one's pretty simple, and then we just write a chamfer in there. So I'll just show you how to create these dimensions here. Go to Creo, and it's pretty much the same as you normally would do them. Click on dimension. Uh, let's do the 32, so from this side to this side, and then sound and mouse click over here, and all you're simply doing the hit return, select, and then you can pull that across like so. It's kind of cheating I suppose. And the other thing, um, that was 32, what was the other one? I think it was uh, 40 and then the 25 we'll use to kind of join these two together. So we go back to here, dimension tool again, internal, and we could come over here to the 25 I think, which is that one there, and center mouse click. Oh no, it gave me a diameter, not diameter, an angle dimension. So we've got to do it the same way again, sorry. Dimension that one to that one. Center mouse click. Center mouse click, there we go. Return. And then I'm just going to sort of cheat here by dragging this over to here. That stays a millimeter away from the item that we want to dimension to. And you can do the other ones it's in that same sort of mode. The linear ones you can do yourself. Um, the only thing that we haven't covered yet really is just this chamfer icon. Uh, sorry, chamfer text I should say. And this we create just by using the text tool. So we'll go back to here. You'll notice under annotate we also have the ability to put notes in. So click on the note tool with or without a leader, which means basically with or without this line coming across. So we say with a leader line, everything else can remain standard default. Click on make note. Click on the thing that you wish to join the leader to. So I'm going to select this little edge here. Click once there. Once that's selected, click OK. And then done. It now says me to select the free point on the drawing to place my note. So I'm just going to click out here somewhere. And that says enter the note. So I'm just going to type in there that is a chamfer of one. So uh, caps lock on, C-H-A-M-F-E-R of 1, and enter once, enter twice, and done return, and there's our note, simple as that. Okay. Obviously, this drawing also needs some center lines. Might see if I can pick one that goes all the way through. There's one there. Uh, we don't need the dimensions, apply. And you can see here, I'll grab that center line and just drag the center lines out rather than dragging, rather than selecting them all. And the same, of course, over here. Shame all annotations. Just choose the one that goes through the whole lot. There it is there. Apply and cancel. Okay, so there's your basic dimensions. Let's have a look. Oops, wrong button. You can do the linear ones. I'm showing you to do those. 
that's all done. Okay, the last couple of things to do is just to add these notes, um, the same way as you did them before, just with that text tool. So coupling to of, and some numbers here, these numbers um, basically identify um, not how many of them are, but the numbers in the balloon should relate to a parts list. I've just copied that from the uh, actual, um, what do you call it, textbook drawing. Um, probably I'll leave them off for this one, I'll just give them the labels. So coupling two off, we'll show you how to do that. And then last thing we'll do is we'll actually then um, do the sections. So coupling to, uh, where are we? Creo, note again, make note, and this time I'm just going to select um, anywhere on my page, I think, from memory. So just about here will do. Okay, done. Place that there. Actually, I don't think I should have. Been, I don't think I should have selected that. Internote anyway, and we'll go with uh, what was it? Coupling. C A U P L I N G. And there are two of per link. Enter. Enter. Oh, okay. So it has given me a leader line, which I didn't really want. Done. Return. And I might be able to edit that lead line out. I'm not too sure. I'm just going to move that over here somewhere. Uh, let me have a look. Might be easier just to redo that. Um, yeah, right, we will get rid of that. And off it goes. Try it again. Note. This time with no leader. Make note. That's it. Doesn't ask to join anything. Click once. Uh, coupling to of enter enter there we go and done and then obviously we need to space things apart so they're not all too cramped up I'll move that view up there a bit and so on so spend some time looking at the solution and trying to get it all nice and neat you can see here the final drawing. Now the sectional views we better cover those but I think I'll do that in a separate lesson. Um, looking at what else there. Oh a title block. There's a few things we need to check in the title block here. The title for one. If we come down to our title block down the bottom here we can see that it's defaulted to retaining clip. If you, while you're in annotate tab you simply double click on there and then overscore um, this, which is actually this code for it. And we're just going to type in what we actually have drawn here. So it's it's the coupling link, uh, details, and OK. King's Christian College, your name, strain standards, tolerances, dimensions, materials various, scales 1 is to 1, the date it was drawn on, Drawing number one, uh, this one here, sheet, uh, this is the first drawing sheet, so number one of probably only going to be two, this is going to be these detailed drawings and some assembly drawings, and a third angle projection symbol in our class there, so that's all complete. Make sure you save that, of course. Okay, and when you've finished uh, doing the sections, we'll then publish it. Okay, welcome to the uh, final stages of completing the detailed drawings for the coupling link. Uh, we can see here, here's our progress so far, and we'll just skip over to the final product. Um, we can see the final product has a sectional front view along line AA, also a sectional front view of the retaining clip along BB. Uh, I've just noticed too, we're missing the diameter symbols of these two dimensions here. And that's about it really, we've got the sections and that to do. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go to sectioning and uh, investigate how that works. So we'll just go back to Creo and we'll come up here to our first part, the coupling. And we'll notice we've got a top view and a front view and it's the front view that we wish to section uh, by putting a sectioning plane through the center here. 
So while you're in the layout tab, um, double click on the front view to open its properties. Go to the section tab. And at the moment you can see there's no section at all. Well, we want to add a section, so click the 2D cross section tab. Click the plus symbol to add one. And you can see here that I've actually got one added from another time. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit create new. And I'll just move this box uh, perhaps over here so you can see this other dialog box. Basically, it's what it is asking us here is what type of sectioning plane do you want or cross section? Is it planar, which means it's just one single line going all the way through or one single cutting plane? Or is it going to be an offset one where you can actually offset the cutting plane to go through a number of objects? For something simple like this, it's just planar, single. We accept that. We click on done. You need to name um, every section. Now, we saw before that I had an, one that was already successful A, so this one needs to be something different. I'll call this one B. Hit enter. And now it's asking us to identify a plane where the section cutting plane wants to be. So I'll come down to my um, tools down the bottom here, turn my planes on and off, zoom in and zoom in out. And you can see they've actually got a plane there. So while I'm in plane, come across and I should be able to select that plane. You can see it highlights. If I hover there, it says base F2 datum plane. Click on that and you'll see now that B has become successful. If we come down and hit the apply button, you can see now that that front view has now been cut in half. So these dash, sorry not these dash lines, these crosshatch lines here represent where this cutting plane has gone through and cut the object there. You can see we project it down from here to here and so on. And the purpose of a sectional view is to reveal interior detail. So you can see, I suppose, with some clearer detail, um, the uh, diameter of these holes, I suppose. It's a pretty simple drawing, but it's, I suppose it's a good one to start sectioning. The last thing to do is to add the uh, arrows in here and also the section line so it knows where the cutting plane is. Two ways of doing this. One, while you're still in this mode, you can use this scroll bar here and scroll along. Click on the box that says arrow display and then select the view where you actually want the arrows to go. So we'll do that for the first one. Click apply. And you can see here now we've got this line BB running through a parallel with that section line. These arrows here represent that everything behind the arrow has been removed and we're looking in at what's left. So everything on the, the top side of this line here. We might just turn those planes off again and you'll see there's our sectioning line running through there like so. The end of the line is actually thicker where it terminates and it goes thinner and it looks fairly similar to an axis line. It will overwrite the axis line that's there. Okay, so that's number one done, so we can close that. Let's come down now to the second sectioning, uh, sectional view, this front view here. Repeat pretty much the same process. Section, 2D, add a 2D. This time I'm going to create one called C, or plane, oh, sorry, and single, and done. Call it C. And this time we need to find that plane running through the center again. So once again, turn my planes on, zoom in, zoom out, and we can select that plane, see it's successful, hit apply. And this time I'm not going to add my arrows at this stage. I'm going to like accidentally hit close and turn my planes back off again. Now I'll zoom in, zoom out, you can see that it's cut through here. You can see these cross hatching lines but there's no representation of the uh, cutting plane in the top view. So if we've accidentally done that, we can add the arrows to this simply by clicking the view that is the sectional view, right click, and where it says add arrow, click on add arrow, and then select the view you want the arrows to go onto. And there we go, we can see CC line has come in. Fabulous. And then once you've completed that, you then need to muck around with the positioning of your dimensions and so on. Um, to ensure that you um, don't have confusing parts and so on. Okay, so sectioning is fairly simple and positioning, just make sure you look at the solution and make sure you get this right. Um, the last thing to do was to add that diameter symbol there and that's done in our annotate tab. Come across to note and no leader 
let's make a note uh, click where you want the object the note to go and this time rather than typing in text I'm going to come down to my symbols here you can see there's my diamond symbol and click close click once click twice and in goes the diamond symbol and then what we might do is just move that bit to the side there oh, it's probably a bit well it's vertical it looks a little bit weird but we'll just uh, persevere with that okay there's a number of different symbols that you'll be able to use um, as you gain more knowledge in graphics okay so while this this drawing is not exactly correct we'll have a look back here uh, we can see this drawing is uh, almost totally complete besides that diamond symbol and our title box filled in and we've got sectional views so it's just about done okay how do you go with that okay welcome to the last stage of this drawing and that's uh, taking it from this uh, Creo view uh, off to a PDF document um, basically if you tried to do a print screen here from Creo besides the colors and things being rather ordinary also some of the geometry wouldn't appear correctly so you always have to publish your drawings to do that's a pretty simple matter all we need to do is come up to the file tab scroll down to where it says save as and if you want to do just a quick export to PDF you can just simply click on that and click OK and it will export your file as a PDF file the first time it does it takes a little bit of time you can see here that now we've got the correct hidden detail lines being displayed the also the um, section lines have been displayed correctly with our uh, long short dash lines and on the ends they're thicker and so on things that you couldn't see uh, back in the um, the preview window I suppose in Creo um, you can have some control over the quality of the PDF by doing a slightly different way of creating the PDF uh, my PDF viewers have a bit of a heart attack just hate that uh, so we'll just do it again file save as but this time rather than going quick export I'm going to go save a copy and down here of course we can change its name um, to something else and we can also change the file format to something else so PDF I'm just going to overwrite that existing one okay to that yeah I've already got one there and here we can change things like uh, the resolution I think the base resolution is 300 I crank mine to 600 uh, grayscale rather than color dash the hidden lines use the pen table from the pens from the um, the file open file in reader okay and off it goes and does its thing so yeah there's your solution uh, to get it from there across to say PowerPoint we simply just go file save as image and JPEG and just go to your settings in your JPEG make sure they're set at maximum which they normally are and then of course save it in there as what it is uh, detail coupling link I save over the top of my existing one and I'm ready now to obviously put that JPEG uh, into PowerPoint. Okay, 